Why do people swear? Hi, I'm Adam and this is Theo. We're comedians teaming up with The Open University to find the answer to the question, why do people swear? And, as it happens, we're well suited for this mission. In a past life, we were battle rappers, the two-on-two -two champions of the UK, no less. And in that awkward world of misfittery and outcastitude, there was only one thing to consider. What is the best way to insult your opponent? Sorry, sorry, could you please pull down your hat? You have a very shiny head. <laughs> Today, we've come to Eastbourne because this evening I'll be performing stand-up at the Royal Hippodrome Theatre. We're hoping to discover the most offensive swear word of all time, and I'm going to drop this ultimate profanity on my unsuspecting audience to test it out. Here we are. Yeah. Is it? It's a nice venue. We've got to find the most insulting profanity there is. Yeah. <laughs> and you've got to drop it in front of all these people. Yeah. So, it's good. You excited? Looking forward to it, mate. Yeah, yeah. Nervous? No, no, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, don't be. Don't be. I'm not. I'll be, I just, no, you know, because it's obviously kids and parents out there. Well, why are you saying that? That's obviously, you're trying to make me nervous now. Oh, my God, no. Oh, my God, Adam, no. I, that's not at all. Right, you, I misread yeah, that. You mis I? Yeah, of right. course you misread that. Okay. Come on, you're gonna kill it. You're gonna smash it out sure. there. Just, you know, find that swear and make it work for you. Yeah, should we get on with it? Should we? Theo, yeah. oh. give me a hand with these ropes. All right, I'll catch you in the bar in ten. Right. Instead of bullshitting our way through this, we decided we should probably speak to a few experts in the field. So we've brought together some of the greatest swearing minds on earth to help us in our mission. I'm meeting Jean-Marc Diwale, Professor of Applied Linguistics and Multilingualism at Birkbeck University of London. He's also written a book about emotions in different cultures and languages. So let's see what he has to say about how swearing changes from culture to culture. Hey Jean-Marc. Ah, hi. Good to How see are you? you. Thanks for meeting us. Well, thank you very much for coming up here and uh, talking to us about swearing today. Uh, let's start with a very broad question, Jean-Marc. Why the f do we swear? I think that by, you, you can express much more emotion in a very short time yep. using a swear word. Mm -hmm. If you feel very emotional, you don't want to produce lengthy sentences. You want to get it out as short and quickly and powerfully as possible. So what, in your opinion, is the worst, most insulting word in the English language? It took me years to find out. Go on. Because in the academic world, we don't use that word. Um, and I don't go to football matches. Yeah. Um, so I approached my colleague, you know, what is the worst English swear word? And uh, he looked at me because he's a, a proper English gentleman. Right. And so I said, Malcolm, we are colleagues, we are linguists, we yeah, can deal with guys, it. Yeah. And then he said, well, I can spell it out for you. It is C. And so I said, <laughs> he jumped up and said, <gasps> Jean-Marc, I'm a little bit taken aback by this right I, now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not surprised. I told him how funny, because that same word um, exists in, in Dutch and French, and it, it's not considered that terribly offensive. Yeah. Since I know that the, this C word is so terrible, yeah. um, I start recognizing it uh, around me. So the other day I was um, at a traffic light, and, and for some reason a uh, car comes next to me, and I see the guy mouthing, and I, and I, I looked at him and I said, oh, I recognize that. I almost wanted to, you know, open my window and say, why did you just call me <laughs> I'm really interested in this. <laughs> so, so just like the most positive reaction to being called a <laughs> ever. Yeah, yeah, I was so interested. <laughs> what about in other cultures? What are some of the worst profanities in other cultures? So um, in Italy and Spain, in typically very Catholic countries, yeah. uh, they enjoy um, using swear words linked to God, uh, yeah. Madonna, Christ. Um, in, in Germany, they like animals and um, yeah. 
have no idea why. So, so there, there are clear cultural differences. Also in Quebecois French, yeah. their worst swear words refer to church furniture. Uh, and the worst swear word, if I may say it aloud, is tabarnacle. Well, the seating yeah. in, in the yeah. church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. It, it has acquired a huge degree of offensiveness. It's a phenomenon that I'm really interested in. It's that um, when you swear in a foreign language, it never feels as bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, because it's just a funny word that you heard. And hence, um, English swear words are quite popular uh, around the world. Yeah. Uh, and they are considered perfectly acceptable within that culture. I saw a, a um, beautiful picture of uh, sales uh, in Japan, and it was sales minus 50 percent these are sales at shop like when yeah. it's a bargain 50 percent yeah. off in the, in the <laughs> shop window right sales, 50 percent so that's unimaginable uh, in an english-speaking country it's hard to imagine this at harrods <laughs> so far we have talked about swear words but yeah. not about curses okay so curses are slightly different yeah in uh, the netherlands for example uh, you can tell someone get cancer yeah. But you cannot say, get AIDS, because that is too taboo. Um, so you can have one deadly disease, but not another? Yes, okay, yes. interesting. So, some are yes. acceptable, some are totally not acceptable. Right, okay. uh, in, in Catalonia, you can curse um, the carpenter who made yeah. the, the cross on which Christ was crucified, <laughs> which I think is absolutely wonderful. Just, you know? There's just one guy getting cursed for yeah. all eternity now? Yes. In, in Catalan? Yeah. yeah, luckily we don't have his name, so... Oh, okay. Jean-Marc, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. I'm gonna bugger off now. See you okay. later. <laughs> Bye. So, Jean-Marc has taught us about how swearing can have very different meanings to different cultures. Not sure how that's going to help Adam shape his performance tonight. We need to regroup so we can delve a bit deeper. Sorry mate, do you know where the bar is? Yeah, it's just over there. Oh, cheers. Bye. Oh mate, look at you, you're a nervous wreck. I'm fine, I'm feeling good. You you are just shaking and you got a drink in your hand. I mean, this is just... Just Shandy. Right, well, I, I've got a feeling that there's maybe a bit of science involved in all this swearing stuff, you know? Like, not just about culture. I think we have to get into, like, the psyche as well. So hopefully do a bit of digging on that in a minute and then we can, uh, we can see where it leads us. Are you going to buy a drink or what? Oh, I'll get this one, mate, don't worry. I'm meeting with expert Dr. Emma Byrne, AI researcher and author of Swearing is Good For You. She's known as the sweary scientist, offering insight to why swearing feels so f***ing good and what it can do for you mentally. Nice to meet you, Emma. Um, so in your book, you talk about how swearing can be good for you and can be a painkiller, but how, how can that be so? Yeah, I mean, we know this from some really repeatable experiments and they so simple, you can do them at home. So all you need is a bucket of ice water and a stopwatch. And if you get people to say one neutral word or one swear word while they're holding their hands in the ice bucket, just in general, people can hold their hands in for about half as long again if they're swearing than if they're not. Yeah, you're looking pretty skeptical about this whole pain killing thing. All right, let me show you. First of all, we're gonna need two words. So give me five adjectives that would describe this here bar. Not swearing, just Not any. swearing, just five. <laughs> five. <laughs> Angular, wooden, grey, attractive, and upright. <laughs> Brilliant. Now give me five words that you'd say if I kicked you in the box right now. <laughs> right, <laughs> is your first one. So we're going to do the neutral one first. So right. what I need you to do is plunge your hand in that ice water. Sure. Someone's standing by with a stopwatch and just stick your hand in there. Okay, just all the way to the bottom, all yeah? All the way to the bottom. Okay, go. Right. If you're finding it hard to keep your hand in there, use the word angular. Just keep repeating it in a way that's going to help you keep your hand in that ice bucket. Angular. Mm -hmm. Angular. Angular, angular, angular. Angular! Angular! <laughs> So that was a minute and 35 oh, seconds. Angular. You're gonna need a towel right now. And so, how did you find saying angular? Was that there's no, any good? There's no punch to it is the thing. And even if you're trying to make it into a swear word. So you're, yeah, you're I was trying, trying to, to at one you're point. You're trying to give it an emotional topspin, but. Yeah, it's just, it doesn't have one. 
Should I try it? I, I think I'm all right now. It's red. To... Yeah, all right, let's go for it. Yeah. So I'm going to reset your, uh, reset the Casio. So this is uh, the 1984 model, I believe. <gasps> Fine vintage. So Surprised it counts in decimal. <laughs> <laughs> right, let me know when you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. So yeah, just trying to keep your hand in there as long as possible, using the word thing. Thing. I went to two minutes. You I could have done more, minutes. I think. You were looking like you were, you were on you. easy street, that's yeah. Time. So how's it feel so instead of angular? It feels really good because it is a release and it's like, has like a, it feels like a punch. It feels like you're saying a punch. Yes, and that's exactly how it works. So what can the study of swearing tell us about us as human beings? Well, the fact that there is some form of swearing in every language means that there's definitely something deep in humanity uh, that we need swearing. We need to be able to express these taboo ideas as a way of essentially projecting our emotions to other people. Um, the fact that we know that swearing is retained by some people after they've had massive strokes that have knocked out all of the rest of their language shows us exactly how the brain is constructed and that language isn't simply packaged up in a small part of the brain. And we also know that it's probably one of the earlier forms of language that we had. In the United States, there's a project called Project Washo, which is this whole extended family of chimpanzees that lived with humans. And once you've toilet trained them, they start to have the same kind of toilet taboos as we do, because they'll go and ask for privacy when they need to use the bathroom, or they'll lie about it if they have an accident. But the sign that they have for the activity of going to the toilet is dirty, which is just this. <laughs> And there's this fantastic description in Roger Foots's book, he's the guy who ran this project, of how when the chimpanzees were annoyed, they would start to sign dirty at him. You know, say, dirty Roger, dirty, <laughs> when they wouldn't let them out, or you know, dirty monkey if another <laughs> primate had, had irritated them in their cages. And so the fact that all they needed was a taboo and a sign for that taboo in order to start using it the way we use swearing, I think means it's pretty fundamental. There is this real gender gap in how we perceive swearers depending on whether they're male or female. There's a quite a depressing study from about a decade and a half ago. A chap from the University of Louisiana, Robert P. O'Neill, sent out questionnaires where he basically randomised whether or not uh, some swearing phrases purported to come from men or women. So there were exactly the same words, but in half the cases he claimed that these were women that had said these things and the other he said that they were men. And all of the respondents, male or female alike, said that women swearing were considered far less attractive, far less reliable, far less in control, far less powerful, whereas men swearing don't suffer any deficit in their attractiveness. Right. But they were also considered to be more powerful, more strong. And I'm hoping things might have changed by now. Swearing is good for you. It's a powerful form of language. And it's the kind of thing that if, as a woman, you kind of tie yourself into this linguistic corset and say, no, I, I shouldn't use that language. It's no language for a lady. Then you're basically just surrendering this amazing part of our vocabulary. Right. And I just, I would hate for that to be the case. Thanks very much, Emma. That was very fucking interesting indeed. I'm fucking off now. Pip, pip. <sighs> what a funny. <laughs> yeah, you know it's it's quite interesting. I think you know. I think there's a bit more complexity to swearing than I thought in the first place. I mean, like, where does it come from, and why do we do it? And yeah, well, mate, while you've been feeling the pressures of tonight, I've actually been doing some research. Look, I've got this book by Melissa Moore. Have you read it? What? No, there's, of course not. There's not been any time. Right. I'm just going to go Bella now. All right, mate. Melissa Moore has a PhD in medieval and Renaissance English literature, studies profanity, and is the author of the popular book Holy Sh A Brief History of Swearing. I want to see what she knows about swearing from a historical point of view, so I'm calling her at her home in Massachusetts. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Theo. So uh, let's start with a broad question, Melissa. Okay, sounds good. 
So what do you think the study of swearing can tell us about the history of the human race? I think swearing is a really interesting way to look at what has been important to various cultures throughout history. Swear words get their powers from our deepest taboos. And so it's really interesting to look at swear words because in looking at swear words, you can really see what a culture cares about on a deep level. And so right now in contemporary America and Britain, our taboos revolve around race. Right. Whereas in the past, you know, in the Middle Ages, a lot of swear words were religious. So go on then, would you be able to give us some examples of kind of interesting swear words that might sound a bit odd to us now, but maybe from different periods of history? Yes, well, in English, the sort of worst thing that you could say in the Middle Ages was uh, an oath by God or Christ's body parts. So something like God's wounds, by God's nails, Christ's blood. And when you swore by God's nails, say, you, you actually were pulling the nails off Christ's body in heaven, which obviously was a terrible thing. You know, it, it sounds sort of bizarre to us today, but in the Middle Ages was a tremendously awful thing. Interestingly, in the Middle Ages, we had most of our contemporary swear words, but um, they were not considered obscene. Like the Anglo-Saxon swear words are shit, fart, arse, and box, and those were all 8th century, but they weren't, uh, they weren't censored or taboo. And f are a little bit later, but they also appear in people's last names, the names of flowers, there was a flower called c there are all kinds of, of uh, f in the Middle Ages, like John the f there's a Roger f by the navel. These were all just people's, <laughs> sorry, these were all just people's last names. Where words appear in uh, English school books in the 15th century, 15th and 16th century, which I always think about when my son is taking French and I always, I look at him learning his vocabulary list and it's, Oh, you know, Bob makes a salad. But in um, the Middle Ages, people, young boys learning Latin would have words like, they'd have to learn lines like, um, I am almost bish turd in your teeth. I will kill you with my own knife. You're the biggest coward that ever So those were the, the words that were and were not obscene in the Middle Ages. In the Renaissance, it starts to transition from religious to sexual swear words. And so all those words that they had in the Middle Ages but weren't obscene start to become obscene. And by the Victorian era, um, swearing looks much as it does today without the racial slurs. So all, you know, the f c all these words are extremely, extremely powerful um, and totally unacceptable and polite discourse. All right, thank you very much, Melissa. Now I've got to go deal with my nervous friend. So with the performance looming, we feel no nearer to finding the ultimate swear word, even though we've tried really, really hard. If only I had one last person to speak to. An Irishman, perhaps. What are you doing there, Adam? I'm trying to find the ultimate swear word. And I can't. I've been searching for years, man. You have? Yeah, I'm not sure it even exists. Just like the clitoris. Comedian Sean Burke is well known for his YouTube sketches and as the host of Channel 4's Hollywood Hijack. He's here to tell us about the creative use of swearing and euphemism. So Sean, yes. swearing can be funny and creative and it can make you laugh as much as it can make you cry. Mm. Why is that? Why do you think that is? There's so many different contexts, really. For example, is so versatile. You could show anger with like, for sake. But at the same time, oh, this is brilliant. You know, at a very basic level as well, a lot of swear words are based around genitals, mm. which is, you know, quite childish humor, but I still laugh at jokes, yeah. you know? So I think that at a very basic primitive level just will always be funny to humans. I think there's also like a rule of K in comedy. If you can, ch if you can say a synonym of a word that has a K sound, a hard K, yeah. then it's usually funnier. When I think of words like and yeah. and even like bugger that have that sort of glottal sort of thing. Yeah, it's just harsh. It's yeah, like it's impactful as well, like something yeah. like that, you know?
head. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of the closest thing you can get to just like a verbal punch. There's this Billy Connolly joke uh, talking about this vicar going back to his school mm. and some eight-year-old telling him to fuck off. And he spends 10 minutes saying all the amazing achievements he did, like everything, became a priest, went to the Vatican, became a cardinal, preached with the Pope for 10 years. And then he says, and you're telling me to fuck off? You fuck off. <laughs> like after that, it's just a kind of contrast of this wizened old man who's a man of God telling the kid to fuck off. Yeah, yeah. It's a surprise as well. It's just like kind of basic humor. Like when you don't see something coming, it's all the funnier. Yeah. So yeah, I suppose it's the shock element. A lot of uh, it. Yeah, it's the shock and surprise of it. It just depends when it's used, I guess. Yeah. So. If we if we swear yeah. and and say you know the the set however many words there are that we know to be curse words that would sort of be banned by, yeah, you know a PG film for example, why is it different when you say a euphemism? Mm -hmm which is sort of flirting around the idea, but you're yeah. basically saying the same thing. The intention is the same. Yeah, but because it requires cooperation from the other person. So you're implying something filthy or offensive in this case, right. but you're not outwardly saying it. So it relies on the other person to actually know what you're talking about. So they fill in the blanks. So right. you don't, because if you're not explicitly saying it, you don't get the same uh, offense regarded because they're putting it together in their head. So it's more playful because it's a sort of yeah. interaction. Like if you know it, you know it. And right. that's partly on you, partly on me. But I didn't just call you <laughs> you know, which is- I called you a nuisance. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. is nicer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not as specific. If you would say, I don't give a mm. no one physically thinks of an actual <laughs> most of the time, you know? <laughs> but when you call someone a piece of mm. which is smaller than an entire it sounds more offensive. Yes. <laughs> I can you. draw a graph of bits of <laughs> that you are and bits that you don't qualify as. I don't give a <laughs> like you said, it's abstract and vague, but like you are an actual piece of <laughs> You is are a more physical specific item and that <laughs> item is dung. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Sean. That's been very informative, You're you welcome. little nuisance. Cheers. And uh, see you later. Take care. So it's showtime. Our mission is almost complete. It's clear that swearing can be creative. It's been with us for thousands of years and its impact varies across cultures. With Adam's performance fast approaching, it's time to make a decision. What is the ultimate profanity? Is it cunt? Is it double cunt cunt cunt? Or is it something different? Right. This is, this is me up next. Your moment of destiny. Mm. Mm. Listen, you beautiful fucking twat. Right. That is an audience out mm. there, right? Yeah. You are just one man. Do not let that get to your head. Just yeah. go out there and smash it. Smash it. Right? Yeah. You are just one man, a nine stone piece of meat with a mic in his hand and mm. swear words in his heart. Go out there, smash it. Drop that bomb. Okay. Hmm. Dance, Eagle. Dance. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, TV's Emma Bunton. Hey, yeah. Emma Bunton couldn't, couldn't make it. My girlfriend said to me the other day, can you pull the blind? I said, yeah, easy, just put on a sexy voice and be nice to their dogs. You know what really separates the men from the boys? Social services. I do a bloody good job. When I was a kid, I got sent home from school early. And when my mum asked me why, I said, well, mum, it's because I said the C word. She said, that wasn't clever, was it? I said, no, it was So the time has come for us to hit this audience with four megatons of insultium mined from the arse mountains and tempered by a man named Bollock. How will it go? Let's find out. I 
So why do people swear? Well, actually, for many complex reasons, we swear as a release, as a way to express things that can't always be said, to offend, to illustrate a point, as pain relief, to add impact, to cement friendships, to break friendships, or even just for the sheer f of it. In fact, there aren't many reasons not to swear. So on that note, f hell Theo, let's get the f out of here, or we're gonna get f***ing lynched. What was the ultimate profanity? It was...